أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مدل له ومن يدل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويوفي لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها فكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله الحمد لله الذي أنزل على عبده الكتاب ولم يجعله عوجا الحمد لله رب العالمين All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all the worlds. All praise is due to Allah who has guided us to this path and we would not have been able to guide ourselves had not Allah Ta'ala guided us. All praise is due to Allah who has revealed the scripture unto his servant. Alhamdulillah alladhi anzala ala abdihi al-kitaba wa lam yaj'aluhu iwaja. Who has revealed the scripture unto his servant and made no crookedness therein. Alhamdulillah bi annahu huwa Allah All praise is due to Allah because as our Lord, our sustainer, our nurturer, He is deserving owing to His essence and His attributes is deserving of all praise. A few weeks ago we stood here in the aftermath of the attacks in Paris, France and we mentioned some verses from the Book of Allah in the aftermath of the carnage that took place in this state in San Bernardino I think those verses are even more relevant for us as believers so we'll start by reiterating those verses and quickly summarizing their relevance for us and then move on to another topic. So Allah Ta'ala mentions in those verses, الَّذِينَ اسْتَجَابُوا لِلَّهِ وَالرَّسُولِ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا أَصَابَهُمُ الْقَرْحِ لِلَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُوا مِنْهُمْ أَجْرٌ عَظِيمٌ الَّذِينَ قَالَ لَهُمْ النَّاسُ إِنَّ النَّاسَ قَدْ جَمْعُوا لَكُمْ فَخْشَاوْهُمْ فَزَالَهُمْ إِيمَانًا وَقَالُوا حَسْبُنَا اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلِ فانقلبوا بنعمة من الله وفضل لم يمسسهم سوء واتبعوا رضوان الله والله ذو فضل عظيم إنما ذلك الشيطان يخوف أولياءه فلا تخافوهم وخافوني إن كنتم مؤمنين. So Allah Ta'ala mentions those who responded to Allah and the Messenger after they suffered great injury. This was revealed in the setback, after the setback of Uhud. And the Muslims, after nearly achieving a victory, suffered a devastating setback, as we said, which just added to the psychological weight of the burden of the, of the setback, the fact that victory was in hand. And they were essentially mopping up, and as we all know, the archers abandoned their position, and Khalid bin al Walid led the charge around the Muslim flanks, and then the Muslim ranks uh, were, were decimated. And 
the Muslims regrouped and they reversed that psychological trauma. When they heard that the Quraysh were coming to finish them off, they marched out to meet them. As you mentioned then at that time they settled at a place called Hamra al-Asad and the Quraysh turned around and went back to Mecca because they realized they caught a break. How did they achieve the victory? They caught a break when the archers abandoned their position. And they realized if we were to confront them again, maybe we wouldn't be as fortunate. In any case, our point is the psychological point, not the strategic point, because we emphasize there's no way, shape, or form for us to engage any sort of military or paramilitary or individual acts of violence against our fellow citizens. So it's the psychological point that we want to drive home here. And that is, they were told, All of the people are gathering against you. Fear the Quraysh, they're not only rallying their forces, this massive force that they led against you, but they're rallying the other tribes to come to finish you off. So be afraid of them, fear them, be in dread of them. They said, Allah suffices us, Almighty God suffices us. What an excellent one to depute our affair to. What an excellent one to trust and trust our affair to. So, as we are in this situation where it seems like everyone's gathering against the Muslims, Everyone's gathering against the Muslims. And everyone, all of these circumstances are conspiring in such a way to fill many of the believers' hearts with fear. Brothers and sisters, understand the law suffices you. Hasbunallahu. Because at the end of the day, this is just a cosmic drama, if you will. And everything and everyone are just players in this drama. This is not our destiny. This world is not our destiny. And every once we realize a significant point, everyone is going to die. Kullu nafsin da ikatul maut. We're all going to die. And once we accept that, and we don't fear death, there's nothing to be afraid of. There's nothing to be afraid of. Kullu nafsin da ikatul maut. وَإِنَّمَا تُوَفَّوْنُ أُجُورَكُمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ فَمَنْ زُحْزِحَ عَنِ النَّارِ وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةَ فَقَدْ فَازِ وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَعُ الْغُرُورِ Everybody will experience death. كُلُّ نَفْسٍ لَأِكُتُ الْمَوْتِ Some people will die in their beds. Some people will die in car accidents. Some people will die of cancer or some other debilitating disease. If you're in the United States, a whole lot of folks are going to die from gun violence. And we'll come back to this point. That's a reality. Since Newtown, Connecticut, the massacre of those 26 children, which didn't change a single policy in this country. It didn't change a single policy because policy is only worthy of being changed when people are killed by Muslims. Or so it seems. Or so it seems. But everyone's going to die. 90,000 Americans have died as a result of gun violence since Newtown. 90,000 Americans have died as a result of gun violence since the massacre at Newtown. And of those 90,000, less than 25 have been killed by Muslims. Let me repeat that. Because you, we are a traumatized community. 
that looks at ourselves through what W.B. Du Bois described as double consciousness through the eyes of others. And the others say you are a community of terrorists. You are a community of killers. You are a community that is inherently violent. 90,000 people have died in the United States of America as a result of gun violence since Newtown, Connecticut, and less than 25 have been killed by Muslims. And that's 25 too many. Let me be clear. Someone might interpret that, oh, we're just belittling that fact. But we're making a greater point. Those other 89 some odd thousand weren't worthy of rallying the media for 24 hour coverage. Those other 89,000 were not worthy of changing a single policy. Unfortunately, 14 people died in San Bernardino. It's a tragedy, it's a travesty. It saddens us, it burdens us. We feel and shed tears for the families. But every day, every single day in this country, every single day in this country, 15 military veterans commit suicide and no one can write a word about them. You don't see a single headline about them. No one suggests a single policy to address the fact that six of veterans in this country commit suicide every single year. And no one has a tear, share to cheer, a, a tear to shed. These politicians don't have a single bill to put forward to assist the silent victims of these wars. Most the millions of Muslims in some places who are killed and the veterans whose lives are torn apart. They had to be shamed to even advance a bill. They just advanced a bill in Congress to give a 3.9%, 3.9% cost of living increase for Social Security recipients, for Social Security recipients and military veterans. 3.9, you know why 3.9? Because they did a study of the CEOs, the heads of these corporations, who are making on average between 250 to 300 times more than these poor people on Social Security, or these veterans, many of whom are not even working, they're living in the streets of the Tenderloin and other parts of our country. And they found that these CEOs who are making 200 to 300 times more than the veteran or the Social Security recipient will receive on average a 3.9% pay raise this year. And so two congressmen had the courage to put forward a bill. And when they were interviewed by the press, as in terms of what they thought would be the fate of this bill, they say, you know who controls our Congress, don't hold your breath in terms of it passing. You're not going to read about that in the newspaper. It's not newsworthy. Only things that affect the 20 wealthiest individuals in this country control more wealth than the bottom 50 percent of our of our population <coughs> we have to be courageous brothers and sisters to look beyond what might affect us as a community and to look at the issues confronting our country and stand up for truth and justice. So they said, they're all the hosts they're gathering against you. Fear them. They said, God suffices us. What an excellent one to entrust our affairs to. And so they stayed at that place 
And they enjoyed, each, they enjoyed each other's company because the Quraysh didn't come back. And their spirits were lifted through their camaraderie with one another and through their pre being in the presence of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so what happened? From qalabu bi ni'matin min Allah wa fadlin nam yamsasum su' wa tab'u ridwan Allah wa Allah wa fadlin azim. And so they went back into Medina where they had been greeted a few days before in humiliation and mockery. They went back with their spirits crushed, with their spirits uplifted, ready to continue the good things they were doing prior. إِنَّمَا ذَلِكُمُ الشَّيْطَانِ يُقَوِّفُ أَوْلِيَاءَ فَلَا تَخَافُونَ وَقَافُونِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ That's Satan. Rather that is Satan. He desires to instill the fear of his dupes into you. Don't fear them, fear me if indeed you are believers. This climate of fear is being stoked by demonic forces. And these forces don't just affect people who aren't Muslim, they affect Muslims. We see the killing and carnage that some people who say they're Muslim are engaging in. It's just as demonic as the forces that are profiting from this situation. The great American blues, jazz blues singer, Gil Scott Heron, he once said in one of his songs, just ask them what they're fighting for. They'll never mention the economics of war. They'll never mention that we're selling weapons to Sunni and Shi. We, we, we arm the Iraqi government for billions of dollars. They left most of their weapons in Mosul, 30,000 Iraqi troops with modern American heavy equipment dropped it and ran in the face of 1,500 ISIS fighters with AK-47s and RPG-7s. And so they just resupplied them for another several billion dollars. They'll never tell you in the fog of war that we just concluded a $46 billion arms deal with the Saudi government. To do what? Liberate Palestine? To go bomb the hapless Yemenis who are starving and being bombed out of their homes. And of course there's other parties to the conflict. But the tons of bombs, they're not being dropped by the Houthis. They're not being dropped by any other force. They're being dropped by American-built airplanes, American-built bombs, purchased with American tax dollars to the tune of tens of billions of dollars. Who's profiting? Saudis are the, are the Sunnis. Iraqi's government is the, is the Shi. The Kurds get their chunk. We just airdropped 50 tons of weapons and ammunition in northern Syria. And believe me, a fair share will end up in the hands of ISIS, the ostensible enemy. Who profits? <laughs> but you're not going to read about that. It's not going to be a big headline. It's going to be in the, in the fine print. What am I saying? I'm saying that we have to declare all of this wrong. Yes, San Bernardino is wrong. We condemn it with the loudest and strongest voice. It is cold-blooded, cowardly murder. 16 American veterans every day taking their own lives is wrong. Billions of dollars being spent to destroy the social fabrics of whole countries that leads to these situations in the first place. There is no jihad Islami which became Al-Qaeda until the CIA built it in Afghanistan. 
and then said boastfully after the Soviets withdrew, this was the CIA's finest hour. That's what speaking of Brzezinski said. You're not going to read about the roots of Al-Qaeda. How did it all start in the first place and our involvement in that? There was no ISIS before we tore Iraq apart. When will we admit the failure of these policies? When will we have systematic journalistic exposés on the fact that the Afghan, the policy of arming and building jihad Islami, which became Al-Qaeda, is a failed policy because we're still fighting them after 14 years, the longest war America's ever fought, and the Taliban still controls most of that Afghanistan. When does it stop? When, do, when is our day of reckoning as a country? We're talking about going back into Iraq, which means what? Those million Iraqi children who died during the sanctions regime after the first Gulf War that everyone forgot about, Desert Storm, and then the sanctions, and Madeleine Albright, halfway through that sanctions regime, said, admitted that we killed half a million Iraqi children as a result of those sanctions and the continuous nonstop bombing after the war. So that means you double that. One million dead children. And it was a failed policy because after killing a million Iraqi children, we had to invade and occupy the country again. And after invading and occupying the country, we withdraw and create a vacuum that ISIS fills. When do we stop these failed policies of war, post-cell death? We get agitated about retail death. When do we condemn post-cell death? And when do we say enough is enough? And that we'll reach into the best of our souls and we'll come together and we'll finish, we'll figure out a humane way to solve these problems that doesn't involve the deaths of a million people, that doesn't involve the, the, the psychological trauma that's inflicted on young men and women from this country who are raised up, thou shalt not kill, who go to Sunday school and learn the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not covet your neighbor's possessions. And then are sent halfway around the world and discover they're killing just normal people just like them, who are just trying to live from day to day, who are just trying to feed their families in most instances. And they see the carnage and the destruction, and they have the nightmares and the trauma, and they come back and they can't readjust. To normal life and so they take their own lives when is enough enough when do we have the courage the moral courage as a country to get to the root of these problems and not just wait for a manifestation of the problems that feeds my political agenda when the Muslims wake up and say we're not going to kill anybody starting with our own Muslim brother I'm not going to be used by a pawn to kill my Muslim brother just because he prays a little differently. I'm not going to kill a Shi if I'm a Sunni. I'm not going to kill a Sunni if I'm a Shi. I'm not going to kill a Sufi if I'm a Salafi. I'm not going to kill a Salafi if I'm a Sufi. I'm not going to be a part of someone else's demonic agenda. <coughs> Each and every one of us, brothers and sisters, has a moral responsibility to our religion. We have a moral responsibility to our country. That we will be advocates of peace, but across the board. As Martin Luther King Jr. said, I cannot segregate my moral concerns. And we are not segregated to say this form of killing and terror is condemnable, but this form of killing and terror, I'll turn a blind eye to. It is all wrong. When God said, thou shalt not kill, there were no 
qualification to that statement. It was a general statement. When our Quran tells us, Don't take the life that Allah has sanctified. Don't take the life that Allah, Almighty God, has sanctified. Brothers and sisters, we have to internalize these meanings. We have to internalize these meanings. Because only until we internalize these meanings can we become a moral force to tell the people of the world another way is possible, another path is possible. We don't have to live like this as human beings on this planet. Things will never be perfect, but they can be a whole lot better than they are now. And it is our responsibility to do everything in our power to make them better. أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَاسْتَقْفُرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ وَلِسَائِرِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ يَقُمْ اسْتَقْفُرُ اللَّهِ الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم من كثيرا. Just one note on that issue. One end on an up note. One more down note. The holy rock thing, as we know, and this is why we says demonic, was based on a lie. The lie of Saddam has weapons of mass destruction. A lie that was cultivated by the New York Times and Judith Miller, if you remember her. Carefully cultivated. And the uranium from Niger, and all of these other lies. And there are a whole lot of other lies. Those are obvious ones that you can mention without being accused of being a conspiracy nut. Because the New York Times actually admitted to those lies and the New York Times is all the news that's fit to print. So we can comfortably talk about those lies. There are other lies that you don't talk about in polite company. But all that death, all that carnage, all that destruction that culminated in ISIS was based on a lie. And we hope that's news that's fit to print. What's the point, brothers and sisters? Be advocates of the truth. Be advocates for justice. Be courageous. Be courageous. We're all going to die. Once we're over that, we can relax. Alhamdulillah. Why? Because now we can live as free men and free women. We can live as free men and free women. When we're filled with fear, we are slaves. And people want us to be an enslaved community. We are free men and we are free women. I swear by this, this town and you are a free man, a free citizen of this town. That's the Quran. We are free men and we are free women. And we should live free. Brothers and sisters, love and laugh. Enjoy your children. Enjoy your spouses. Go out to the park, live your life, and look at the beauty in the world. Yeah, there's a lot of ugliness, but there's a whole lot of beauty. Look at the beautiful faces around you. Look at this beautiful sky. Look at that beautiful, long-awaited rain and the sounds that it made as it was descending in the early morning. Look at the beauty. Live your life. You're a free man. You're a free woman. Free women. Don't let anyone put you in, in chains. Don't let anyone put you in chains. And that's the only way to break the chains. That's the only way to break the chains. Allah barik fikum. Allah yatikabbal minkum. Zadakum Allahu fi kulli khair. Fi kulli khair. Fi al-hadi al-hayati wa ba'da al-mamat. اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات 
ربنا لا تزي قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وحب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا فرغ علينا الصبر وثبت أقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين ربنا فرغ علينا الصبر وثبت أقدامنا وتوفنا مسلمين وعفو عنا وغفي لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من الحمد والحزن ونعوذ بك من العجز والكسل ونعوذ بك من الجبن والبخل ونعوذ بك من غلط الدين وكفر الرجال ونعوذ بك من الفقر إلا إليك ومن الخوف إلا منك ومن الذل إلا لك اللهم اقسم لنا من خشيتك ما تحول به بيننا وبين معاصيك ومن طاعتك ما تبلغنا بها جنتك ومن اليقين ما يهون علينا مصائب الدنيا ومتعنا بأسماعنا وأبصارنا وقوتنا ما أحييتنا واجعله الوارث منا واجعل ثأرنا على من ظالمنا وانصرنا على من عدانا ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل مصيبتنا صعيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا تسلط علينا بذنوبنا من لا يقفك ولا يرحمنا يا يا أرحم الراحمين وعفو عنا وفي لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصر على القوم الكافرين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلاما على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا إنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أكمل الصلاة يا حمد يا حمد الله